Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 875. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about lifestyle moves made during the pandemic. Because I was curious, and you might be curious, What did people do during the pandemic? Where did they move? Why did they move? What was their decision-making about? And I found a study that was done, and it's from abcnews.com, and it said residents left big metros, big metro areas, during pandemic for family. So I wanted to share this article with you because there was a lot of interesting information in here, and this will give you some insight as to why people are moving, where they're moving, why this big housing crisis is happening, and what people are really thinking. What's behind all of this? So this article says, C.C. Linder was living in a 770-square-foot apartment outside Washington, D.C. last spring when the area went into lockdown because of the coronavirus pandemic. In May 2020, after a few months of both living and working in the small space, Linder decided to leave the capital area and move into the 2,000 square foot beachside home she jointly owns with her parents in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Now she gets to see the sunrise over the water each morning before work. If I'm teleworking anyway, why not move to this other place that is more visually attractive? It's beachside and someone can occasionally cook for me, Linder said. Though that didn't exactly work out, my mom has me cooking for them. Lindner was not alone in her thinking. According to a new study and data from the U.S. Census Bureau, she was one of thousands of people who migrated out of the nation's largest metropolitan areas and into smaller ones during the pandemic. The study found that, like Lindner, many of the people weren't driven by new jobs or weather or even a fear of the virus, but a desire to be closer to family and a freedom to make it happen because of remote working. Although the pattern of people moving from larger to smaller cities has been going on for several years, the pandemic exacerbated that trend, said Peter Hasleg of Vanderbilt University, who conducted the study on migrant motivations with Daniel Weigley of Georgia Tech. Their paper has not yet been published. The data adds to understanding of how the pandemic has changed where and how Americans live. The moves were most common among those with higher incomes and more job flexibility. If the trends continue, it could have long-term implications for real estate markets, tax bases, and the wealth inequality in cities, according to researchers. For us, the question is, is this a temporary blip or is it going to continue, Hasleg said. If work from home really is going to be a factor in job and company decisions, and by allowing work and location to be separate decisions, people are going to be able to optimize their locations if they have the right jobs. The Census Bureau data shows that the New York metro area, which was hit early by the new coronavirus, declined by about 108,000 residents, or 0.5%. Roughly 216,000 residents moved out of the metropolitan area, but the natural increase from births and gains in international migration offset the departures. The New York metro area has experienced decelerated growth over the past several years, but last year's decline was a bigger bite of the Big Apple than in 2019 when it lost 60,000 residents. The nation's next largest metro areas, Los Angeles and Chicago, also experienced greater population declines last year compared to the previous year, around 0.5% last year compared to 0.3% in 2019 for both metropolitan areas. San Francisco also had a drop of around 0.5% last year compared to a 0.1% gain in 2019. 
I think some core urban counties like Manhattan, San Francisco, and others may have taken a bigger brunt of pandemic-related out movement, as well as lower immigration, said William Fry, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. Overall, it was a year of slow growth with selective movement out of some urban centers. Smaller metros in the Sun Belt and West, several with large communities of vacation homes, saw the biggest population gains last year, mostly driven by migration. Led by the Florida retirement community, the villages, the metros seeing population increases between 3% and 4% included St. George, Utah, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Austin, Texas, and Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Sun Belt megalopathies such as Dallas, Houston, and Phoenix also grew last year, though not as much as their smaller cousins. The Census Bureau data captured changes in states, metros, and counties between July 1, 2019 and July 1, 2020. The last third of that time frame overlapped with the first three months of the spread of the virus in the U.S. Population change estimates are different from the 2020 census, a headcount of every U.S. resident that determines how many congressional seats each state gets. Those numbers were released last week. Population changes are estimated using data on births, deaths, and migration. Haslag and Weigley estimate that 10% to 20% of the 300,000 interstate moves they studied between April 2020 and February 2021 were influenced by the pandemic. Their study used four years of long-distance moving data obtained from Unigroup, the parent company of United Van Lines and Mayflower Transit. Job-related reasons for moving dropped from 46.6% of responses before the pandemic to 34.5% after the start of the pandemic in the U.S. in March 2020, while the desire to be closer to family jumped from 24.7% to 29.9%. The researchers theorized the jump for family reasons was due to people wanting to create social bubbles with family members, and the drop in job-related reasons was due to remote working and the decoupling of jobs from offices. It's not really about the infection rate when it comes to moving. It's about all the other things that came with the pandemic, whether it was to be closer to family or work from home, Hasleg said. That was really surprising to us. Higher income households moved less because of job loss or to take a new job than for other reasons, such as lifestyle or the ability to work remotely. In fact, 75% of those who cited the ability to work remotely had annual household earnings of $100,000 or more. Lower income households were more likely to move for financial reasons, such as job loss, or to move to a place with a lower cost of living, the researchers said. David Mann and his wife Lauren had been wanting to move to the U.S. southeast from Dallas to be closer to family and friends for some time, but it was the pandemic that made it possible. Knowing they could work from home in their jobs in supply chain consulting and merchandise planning, they made the leap and moved to Atlanta last summer. Working from home gave us the opportunity to move without having to look for new jobs, Mann said. End of article. Well, I thought that was very interesting. It says a lot about why people are making decisions to move. And it sounds like people are continuing to move from the larger metropolitan areas into smaller towns or maybe to be near family. So I just thought that was something interesting to share with you. I always like to get research from studies and hear what trends are. So this was a good one. And I thought if you've already moved or you're thinking about moving, you might want to compare notes with some of the ideas in this article. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. And don't forget, we still have our review contest going where you have the opportunity to win one of 20 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197. 10 people will win the Wealth Heiress book, which was named to the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority. And five people will win one-on-one sessions with me. All you need to do is leave a review on Apple Podcasts for Be Wealthy and Smart, and that will get your name in the drawing one time. And if you've read The Wealth Heiress book and leave a book review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times, and winners will be announced on June 1st. 
And thank you to everybody who has left a review. I so appreciate it. I read each and every one of them and I'm so grateful for you taking the time to do that. It means so much. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.